we're given two curves in polar form. One a simple circle centered at the origin, and the other one a little more complicated. Then we're asked a series of questions about area, about the rate of change of various combinations or components of the curves. And so the sort of information that's going to prove useful, I've included the typical formulas that relate to polar curves. There's a little bit of an interesting twist there at the bottom. I'll be talking more about that later. But let's just jump into the problem, see what we've got. So in part A, we have to find the area of this region that I've shaded in gray. Uh, first, we might think this is a area between curves problem. Those are pretty common. But if you look at this and think about it for a little bit, you realize that the area in question is most simply described as the area of this quarter circle. That's what's in the second quadrant. And then in the four, first quadrant, it really doesn't have anything to do with the outer curve, the r equals 3 curve. It's really just the area between the origin and this curve from 0 to pi over 2. And so we're going to write that the uh, area of r equals the area of this curve, or the this area in the second quadrant. And what is that? That is the area of a circle of radius 3. So that would be pi times 3 squared. And then we divide by 4 because it's only one quadrant, only one quarter worth of the uh, area of that circle. So what we need to add to that is an integral from 0 to pi over 2. And using the area formula for this other more complex curve of 1 half r squared d theta, where r is a function of theta. And r is, in fact, given as 3 minus 2 sine 2 theta. I hope you can read that. Now, this is a calculator question, so we may as well invoke the calculator here. I've already placed the formula into y1 and so now I need to find that integral. So first it's one half and then we need the integral. Now as some of you have pointed out there's multiple ways to access the integral function but here I'm using alpha window, which is f2, and then 4. Okay, so I'm going from 0 to pi over 2. And my function is y1, but that quantity has to be squared. I suppose I could have done without the extra set of parentheses, but now I'm committed to it, so I'm just going to go with it. And again, this is all with respect to theta, but rather than work in polar coordinates, it's my typical um, response to just work in terms of x and use x for theta. Okay, so there's that intermediate result, 2.6393, but I'm going to add to that, well, let's just to be on the safe side, we're going to indicate that this is approximately equal to 2.6393. So we could stop here, but I'm going to go ahead and give a final calculation. I'm going to add to that this 9 pi over 4 an approximation of it. So 9 times pi over 4. And get for a final approximation 9.7079. Let's change it to that. 9.7079. A 
Okay, that's a fairly straightforward calculation. And I think you'll find that B is also a very predictable kind of calculation. We're looking for dx d theta for the more complicated curve. That theta equals pi over 6. Now again, I've just written out here what hopefully you have all memorized by this point, namely that x is r cos theta, y is r sine theta. You can see why those components come out that way just from this diagram. So what we're really looking for is uh, we're going to say that x of theta equals uh, 3 minus 2 sine 2 theta. And then we have to multiply that by cosine of theta. Okay. So now we have dx d theta, which we're going to then evaluate at theta equals pi over 6. But we're just going to approximate this numerically. I'm just going to, because I'm obsessive compulsive, I'm going to say that this back here in part A was obtained by evaluating numerically. And I am, this is also going to be evaluating numerically. So let's go back to our calculation. And we, I'm going to again select. Um, using F2. We're going to differentiate. It's with respect to theta, but I'm going to write it as x. And our function now is y1 times cosine theta. And that's being handled at x equals pi over 6. And what have we got? Negative 2.3660. So we turn to part C. Now part C is one of the more interesting questions I saw on this exam. And that is because it's not entirely clear what we're being asked to calculate. Now what I've indicated down at the bottom of this uh, section in blue, is that I've concluded that what they want is d by d theta of r outer minus r inner. But I want to speak to that for a moment, because it's a little bit confusing. We're asked to find the distance between the two curves. Okay. The rate at which that distance is changing with respect to theta. So ordinarily, we would write out a distance formula the distance formula involves both x and y, or r and theta. For example, if we were asked to find the distance between these two points and how it's changing, then we have to differentiate that expression with respect to theta. But in fact, I think what we have is a simpler calculation to do. Namely, we only need to find the rate of change of the difference of the r component of the, of the um, distance out from the origin. And the reason I say that is we really will never get into this general case here. That's because since we're being asked to differentiate with respect to theta, the theta at the time that we're asked to find is is the same for both the outer and the inner curve. And that's always going to be the case. And so the change is simply along the line of this radius outward. We know in the first quadrant, r outer minus r inner, we can see from the picture, is going to be a positive quantity. So we're working with distance. We've got the sign right. And so all we're really being asked to find is d by d theta of 3 minus 3 minus 2 sine theta, or 2 sine 2 theta. 
and then we're asked to evaluate that at theta equals pi over 3. Now, in fact, this is a, uh, it's not a good line. Let's try that again. That's a little better. This is a calculator question. So we could just use in deriv to calculate it. And that's probably what I would do if it were me on the exam. But I thought we might get just a little more insight in this particular case in handling this analytically. We can. There's nothing preventing us from do it on the, doing it on the calculator question. And another way to think about it is, since you only have 30 minutes to use your calculators on the AP exam, parts C and D of this question don't, in fact, require us to use a calculator, so we might put, put those off until later. Uh, long story short, I'm going to do this analytically. Well, d by d theta of a constant is 0. This is also a constant, so this is really, uh, I'm just going to say simplifying. We have d by d theta here. What do I mean by simplifying? Okay, uh, The derivatives of these are both going to be 0 is what I mean by simplifying. So what we really have is 2 sine 2 theta. Well, and we did get the sine right. We're evaluating at theta equals pi over 3. And so this is really just, um, we can use the chain rule, but it's going to be 4 cosine 2 theta. Okay, when we use the chain rule, we get an extra power of 2. That's why it's a 4 out front at theta equals pi over 3. So what's the cosine of 2 pi over 3? Well, you can do a little calculation, realize that they're talking about this point here. And the distance is along that y-axis. It's negative a half. So this all comes out to 4 times negative a half. And that equals negative 2. So part D, we're given uh, d theta dt equals 3. That's given. Um, I'm sorry, d theta dt at a particular point, namely, oh, for all t. t greater than or equal to 0. We know that, and so we're trying to find dr dt at theta equals pi over 6. Well, the key here is to see that this is a chain rule problem. Namely, we can take dr d theta. r is, in fact, a function entirely of theta, and then multiply by d theta dt. And that allows us to calculate dr dt. So what do we know about d theta dt? We know that that is, e oh, I'm sorry, what do we know about d theta dt? We know that d theta dt is uh, 3. So the question is, what is dr dt at theta equals pi over 6? Okay, well, we can figure that out. We did the previous part analytically. We may as well uh, work this as well. So dr d theta equals d by d theta of 3 minus 2 sine 2 theta. That's what we're evaluating. That is equal to, obviously, the constant doesn't matter. So we're going to end up, again, using the same chain rule argument as before, negative 4 cos 2 theta. Be careful about the sign, but I think I've got it right. And then we're evaluating that at, at theta equals 
theta equals pi over 3. So this is at 2 pi over 3. We've got negative. We found that we had to evaluate that uh, cosine of 2 pi over 3 before. It was negative a half. So that negative and this negative are going to cancel, and then we're going to get um, uh, dr d theta equals a positive 2. And therefore, let's just say combining results. Therefore, dr dt, again, at theta equals, uh, sorry, theta equals pi over 3. Theta dt equals 2 times 3, which is 6. Hope you enjoyed that.